It's now time to hear from the perspective from the field with two members of the Miryu Foundation Gabriel Research Network. I'm delighted and honored to introduce both. I'd like to warmly welcome Dr. Sahira Banu uh, to take the floor. Dr. Banu is a senior scientist and heads the program for emerging infections under the Infectious Diseases Division at the International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research, otherwise known as ICDDRB, in Bangladesh. She, her research focuses on mycobacterial infections, epidemiology, diagnostics, and therapeutics. Dr. Banu established the tuberculosis laboratory at ICDDRB and, and introducing sophisticated techniques and building programs to make it the premier facility of its kind in Bangladesh. ICDDRB's international collaborations include USAID's Alliance for Combating TB and projects with the Miryu Foundation. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizer, Miryu Foundation, for inviting me to speak in this symposium. Uh, Today, I will go through the challenges and successes in child TB in Bangladesh. And before I uh, go to my presentation, I just to give you an insight of the child TB situation in Bangladesh, I would like to share a video uh, of little roommates who had to go through uh, a, a, a time with all the struggles of TB diagnosis. so, as you uh, have heard from Rumai's parents, they had to go through a lot of struggles to diagnose TB, which actually took around four months uh, to get the child, you know, diagnosed TB. And truth to be told, this is a common scenario in Bangladesh with child tuberculosis. So uh, despite, you know, having a, a very good program in Bangladesh, uh, and the TB control program is quite successful, we still have, we are listed in the high burden TB countries in Bangladesh, and especially uh, diagnosis of child TB remains a challenge. If you look at the data, WHO data 2022, uh, in 2021, there was uh, like three, uh, 375,000 you know, people fell ill with TB, and of whom 8% were children. However, there were 68,000 you know, people who were not no diagnosed or not notified, and it is assumed that a large portion of them are actually children. And unfortunately, there were uh, 43,000 you know, people who died of TB in Bangladesh in 2021. This slide shows the child TB case detection <coughs> notification uh, since 2013. And if you look at the percentage of child TB, 
it remains stagnant over the last 10 years. And there are many reasons behind this, you know, uh, low rate of child TB in Bangladesh. You know, in adults, uh, detection of child TB uh, is comparatively easier because you can uh, confirm TB by finding presence of you know, acid, acid first bacilli in the sputum. However, in children, it's not that straightforward, especially under the chil uh, children under the age of five, they are often possibacillary and they, they cannot produce sputum. And even the older age group children, they cannot produce enough you know, cough to uh, to be uh, tested, you know, so that is a that is a very challenging issue for you know diagnosing TB in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, and I think in any uh, high burden countries, uh, TB in children is sometimes overlooked because you know the symptoms are non-specific. Uh, there is another problem is there is lack of confidence among the physicians and the other healthcare providers. You know, they do not have. Uh, enough tools or guidance or technologies to diagnose a case of child TB. Especially the physicians, they are not very confident because they are not very well trained. Another key challenge is the lack of sensitive diagnostic tools. As I have mentioned that as these are possibacillary, so it is very difficult to confirm the case by, by uh, microbiological you know, testing. X-ray is an uh, X-ray is a tool, but in more, most cases this is non-specific, and there is like variability of the interpretation of these X-rays. Montu test is often negative on the malnourished children, and of course extra pulmonary TB, which is very common in children, but we have very limited facilities to test these extra pulmonary specimens. And the important thing is there is lack of awareness among community. Because many of the parents, they even do not know that the child may have TB. And sometimes even they are aware of that, they are reluctant to accept that. And they do not start the treatment because there is a stigma associated with that. So in order to increase the child TB case detection, uh, we actually started a project. This is a USAID funded Alliance for Combating TB project. We designed a holistic approach with multi pronged you know, interventions, uh, which we implemented since 2021. I will go through each of the activities that we actually you know, uh, uh, started. So the key was the active case finding. You know that in Bangladesh, uh, there is, at least in rural areas, there is some community-based screening. But in order to increase the missing cases, we started this facility-based screening in um, all the health facilities in 30 districts of Bangladesh, which covers almost five divisions of the country. So this is just the algorithm of how we uh, actually screen uh, these uh, children in the facility and also the community. So in the facility, especially these are the hospitals, uh, tertiary, and also as the Upozela health level uh, facilities. So we have trained screeners, and we set them at the um, outpatient service, and also indoor, where the screen, they have the uh, the set of questionnaire uh, and the NTP approved, you know, uh, some presumptive cards. They screen those children who are coming to those facilities. And once they find a child as a presumptive, they then refer that child to a physician in the same facility. And once the ch uh, physician they, uh, thinks that, yes, that child might have TB, then he... Uh, writes the investigations that is to be uh, carried out. And our screeners, they help, they facilitate to complete these investigations. And once the TB is diagnosed, these are put on the treatment. And our screeners, they follow up and they report those cases. Similar things happen in the community, especially the contacts, the close contacts of the bacteriologically positive cases. Uh, the community health worker, they screen them. And the similar, you know, 
uh, algorithm is followed once someone is uh, suspected to have TB. And ultimately, the diagnosed TB is followed up by our screening, uh, screeners to complete the treatment. And then those reported to the NTP. And this is just the you know, uh, form that was developed by our you know, project. Uh, this is the NTP endorsed you know, evaluation card. The screeners, they use this. And all the symptoms are uh, uh, written there. So if they have symptoms of TB, then this uh, screener then refer the patient with this card to the clinician. So one of the important thing is capacity building. As I mentioned that as child TB is quite non-specific, so the healthcare providers, they are not you know, equipped with the guidance, the skills. So under this project, we uh, uh, developed a training module, one day intensive course. And with this training, we have already uh, trained 2,000, more than 2,000 physicians. And also, you know, sputum induction is a technique which needs, you know, um, some training. So we also provide this training. And to get easy access of this training module, we are now in the process of digitalization of this training module. Uh, you know that under five diagnosis of uh, TB uh, in under five children, this is a great challenge. And, uh, Integrated management of child TB illness. This is uh, uh, this in this approach. There is integrated, you know, service for the children under five and their health and then well-being. So what we did for the first time in Bangladesh, we introduced this active case finding in the um, IMCI corners. So we have so far we have established this in 51 facilities. And uh, we are also training uh, the, uh, uh, the healthcare providers as those facilities. And so far, we have diagnosed around 500 you know, uh, children with TB. These are all under five. And we are now expanding this active uh, screening in other IMCI corners. And we are also, as that uh, IMCI TB is not included in the IMCI, so we are also planning to uh, implement this training manual uh, of this IMCI. You know, these are the list of the diagnostics. As we already know, that uh, diagnosis uh, of TB in children is very challenging. So in our project, we try to uh, ensure the MONTU test because you know that child TB is not always, you know, bacteriologically uh, confirmed. So most of the cases, they are clinically diagnosed. And for that clinical diagnosis, we need this MONTU test, chest X-ray. We ensure the chest X-ray. Of course, bacteriological confirmation where uh, children can produce sputum. We use that microscopy and uh, expert because expert is uh, not 100% you know, universal in Bangladesh. We still depend on the microscopy. Extrapulmonary investigations is always a challenge. Uh, and then, now we have introduced this stool expert, you know, ultra. So that is one of the new, I would say, no innovation or new tools that is being used for the children who cannot produce sputum. Just I would like to give a background of how ICDDRB actually, you know, worked on this uh, stool expert. In 2017, we started a project where we optimized this uh, expert uh, in a stool among the adult positive patients. And we found that it was like 90%, you know, sensitive compared to sputum. And subsequently in 2018, we piloted those in, in children and we found very good results and that the result was published. And in 2020, we then scaled up under the TB Reach project funded through Stop TB Partnership uh, we scaled up these to 18 facilities. And if you look at the results, you will see that this is very promising, you know. We, out of these uh, uh, 2,333 child presumptive, we found a 308, you know, positive, which is 13% positivity. 72% were, you know, actually bacteriologically positive. And if you consider the specimens, stool has better, you know, positivity than the, the respiratory specimens. And of course, ultra has, you know, better sensitivity. 
So as we always talk about the community engagement, you know, it's very important to increase the awareness among the community because uh, stigma is, a, is an issue uh, associated with this TB, especially among children. So we have designed a number of actually uh, community awareness campaign. Uh, we do courtyard, you know, uh, uh, meetings, one-to-one -one discussion. We distribute the information, cards, uh, materials, with also with the contact numbers of the TV services, what are available, and uh, we do, uh, in the community, we do contact investigation, and also we try to uh, involve the local influential who are actually, you know, gatekeeper of the community. So we have, uh, under this project, we have developed a number of uh, innovative and interactive, you know, uh, outreach campaign. I just would like to uh, show some of the snapshots of what we are doing. We use this, you know, uh, this kind of Gombira song in local dialect, you know, a puppet show, and these are all in the community. And we found that these had actually uh, increased a lot of awareness in the community, and we find very good results out of this. We know that actually TB is a TB is uh, uh, TB can affect anyone, but uh, for many reasons, it actually TB disproportionately affect the children, uh, uh, poor socio uh, people with socioeconomic uh, low socioeconomic strata. So we wanted to confirm that uh, every patient has got all the investigations done and also the transportation costs. So in order to do that, actually we have. Um, set up a social welfare fund where we provide, you know, tra transport transportation cost and the um, investigation cost. So far, this is through a social welfare, actually, you know, a fund. And so far, we have supported uh, 657, you know, children and 275 children were diagnosed to have TB. Uh, we feel that without this support, these children would have, you know, would have not been uh, diagnosed. So now, so, so far, I have talked about uh, the problems and challenges. Now, I'd like to just take you through the successes, the achievements that were, you know, we had through all these interventions. So, if you look at the graph, you see there is a um, steep, like you know, increase, gradual increase of the child case detection uh, from January 2021. Uh, in each quarter, you see that. The, from 17, there were 1,100 cases. And it gives an idea that how our interventions could actually you know, increase the case detection over the time period. And this is the uh, graph of the result from the Rajshahi division. And if you look at that, uh, in 2019, the TB, child TB case detection rate was 3.7%. And over the period, it increased to 5.8%. Uh, percent in 2023. And if you look at the right side, the under five children diagnosis, I mean, very, I mean, uh, interestingly, we found that it increased from 7.7% in 2019 to 21.4%. Similar result was found in select division because we are covering whole of this uh, division and it the case detection rate increased from 4% to 6% in 2023. And with similar, uh, you know, results uh, found under the um, uh, children under the five uh, years of age. We found the same result in the Dhaka metro area. Okay, I'm going to <laughs> finish. So as we actually, uh, through our journey, uh, our like, you know, uh, child, uh, child TB, uh, detection, we had a lot of, you know, successes and challenges, but as we move forward, we feel that every child should, uh, every child deserves the right to have TB-free, you know, uh, future. And uh, by standing, you know, united and acting today, uh, we would like to pave, you know, the way for our uh, future generation to have a TB-free Bangladesh, and we want to have a vision of Bangladesh that there is no child, you know, 
with TV as a reality. Thank you for your patience <laughs> here.